Um, we make microbial products for honeybees and today we are here to collect some honeybees for a microbial plating. We would like to find out what kind of microbes are present in the gut of the honeybee, specifically lactic acid bacteria. The greater volume, the greater amount, the greater concentration of lactic acid bacteria present in the honeybee's gut is proportional to its health. The healthier it is, the more beneficial bacteria is present in the honeybee's gut. So I basically do all the microbial analysis. I also do a lot of like corresponding with beekeepers to get them to send us samples. And once they do send samples, then I basically do the analysis of the samples and okay. you know do reports on them and do the statistics, that sort of stuff. I work just with honeybees, okay. but obviously Slava works with um, poultry, uh, swine, um, silage inoculants, so all sorts of different um, agricultural applications of microbes, essentially. We do look for other bacteria as well, and I know if there's any other like non-bacteria, like fungus, like fungi or anything like that, um, but we are primarily focused on lactic acid bacteria, just because there's so much literature out there that you know says that they have such an important role. Mm -hmm. These are all relatively small, they just split them. Okay. There are beautiful comb, wow. Such a beautiful wax. Yeah, I mean, they do such a gorgeous job. This is perfect. This is perfect? Yeah. Yeah, I can see some larvae in there. Yeah, there's like a larvae on the bottom. Alright, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, the ones that are flying out, they're mature enough to go forage and do their own thing and actually collect nectar and. Uh, and pollen and all the delicious stuff. But these are young ones, they don't know what's going on yet, so just born, maybe a few days. You know, three to five, maybe ten at most. Go right in there, please. And then we take it back to the lab because um, they will be euthanized by CO2 um, and because they will just go to sleep. And then we will freeze them just to, um, you know, preserve the samples for later testing if we need to. But we will also plate the ones that are fresh right on the uh, selective media, probably even today. Our product is used to, to control chalk brood. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's noxema, if it's European fall brood, and we've even seen very good results with American fall brood. What is your goal for the number of hives that you want to test? Well, uh, as many as possible. I would like to continue the validation of this for as long as I can. Um, just to, because it's nice to have continuous time samples. Um, it's nice to see what's going on from year to year. Bee pods has, has bees that are treatment free. And you guys don't treat them with any antibiotics. You guys don't treat them with any probiotics. There is no, um, you guys, I like the fact that you are as natural to you know as mimic in nature as possible and this is a very good baseline for us to see uh, what natural microbiota is supposed to look like assuming it looks like the bees are very healthy we have to compare it to many other samples across the country this golf course is very responsible towards pesticide spraying and when they do it how much they make their own bees um, okay. in a different part of the course okay. and they're very good about um, doing things like spraying at night good. So it'll be dry in the morning, things like that. They do as limited as they can. They actually, this one got an Audubon certification. Oh, how um, wonderful. So they're very conscious of it. Yes, I would like to bring the um, the population of bees in the United States back to the level of, you know, when it was in the 1950s, because it was five and a half million in the 1950s. Now it's two and a half million. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's a problem. We'd like to restore that. Do you feed any of the bees or you just let them get nectar and pollen? As little as humanly possible. Actually, this is the first year where I really didn't feed at all and we would put them in in spring and we gave them the last of what was in the can and that was it. So we're kind of, we would like to feed not at all or if we do feed this year we're going to do, we found this great recipe for a honey tea hmm. and still feeding them honey water basically with um, different essential oils in it as opposed to feeding them sugar water mm -hmm. in an effort to give them their own food back. Sure. A little nutritionally superior. I mean the, the gut is like a big airport, you know, it's the external communication with the outside world. When there's too many chemicals or pesticides or some beekeepers use antibiotics, they wipe out everything. 
But with probiotics or beneficial bacteria, do they create a very unfavorable environment for the pathogens to stick around? They don't kill them, they just call them, just tell them to just leave, you know, muscle you out and travel downstream and get excreted. You know, bees go on a cleansing flight and they're not in their hive anymore. And it works really well, to be honest with you. I'm we're, we're very thrilled with the results, especially with the overwinter survival. I mean, I'm very happy that your survival is excellent. It, it really is. I mean, the beekeepers that we've been working with, they had, like, the one I visited yesterday lost half of his hives, 50%. And for a commercial beekeeper, he's losing 50% of, say, 1,000 hives. It's a lot of money, a lot of income, a lot of loss. Emotional loss because beekeepers really love their bees. We've been going around to beekeeper associations across the state and advocating for more sustainable beekeeping practices. Well, one of the things that I'm proposing, at least to people, is that they 10% of their hives, this year 10% of the hives, don't feed them, don't pull their honey, and just see. Just see for yourself if they don't improve. Their survival rate of that group doesn't improve. So can I ask, is there a specific reason for like the shape of your hives? It seems it's actually based off of uh, the catenary curve, which is how they would be forming their hives if they were doing it mm. in nature, as close to a rounded edge as we could. Mm. So it's that um, sort of length to width ratio mm -hmm. of distribution. These are actually compatible with langs, so you can swap back and forth between them. Mm. So yeah, if you're looking at the way that they form in nature, there is a certain ratio. So this is a squared off version of it. They'll make it the exact size, obviously, yeah. with bee space on each side. That with the additional probiotics, we will see um, colonization of the honeybee's gut with beneficial bacteria. So essentially, the, the beneficial bacteria that we feed them will stay in their gut. We recommend using our product three times a year. Mm -hmm. um, in the spring, during the brood buildup, mm -hmm. uh, during the summer when there's a dark period, when there's nothing really growing, and of course in the fall, um, it's a really pleasurable way to keep them for yeah. so rewarding. I mean, it's just like being here, just listening to the buzz, just having these waves of their buzzing bounce against me. It's just so pleasant. The, the smell of wax, the smell of propolis, it smells, of, it smells like health. I, I, I always associate, associate the smell of health. Mm -hmm. I mean,